I'm not going to pretend that this story is amazing, but it had a whole two weeks this year dedicated to it. Hi, I'm Lee, or Lim, and I'm a person with Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD. While ASD does not make me super special, it does mean that there are events that happen, and this experience gave me a large realization. <laughs> so, for any person who has ever told their parent or guardian, I really want a pet. And I'm going to clean up after it, and I'm going to feed it, and if it's a dog, walk it every day. I have a short story to see if you really are willing to be an owner. Because the fun part of playing with your pet, making a bed for it, there's more to it. <laughs> I have what many people consider to be an ugly dog. <laughs> She looks like an Ewok from Star Wars, <laughs> particularly when uh, she needs a haircut or it's winter because I don't trim her when it's cold. Maggie is her name and we are not sure what breed she is. <laughs> we suspect a Shih Tzu and a Schnauzer but are not positive. <laughs> she is actually my kid sister's pooch. My little sister has a very active life. And Maggie needs an old couple, or <laughs> an old couple with an introverted nature and an old spirit. My husband and I are perfect for her. We don't anticipate actual children, and most importantly, someone is almost always home. This dog is very nervous and very anxious, but she is also very, very sweet and very, very affectionate. She doesn't do cuddling, but... You can't have everything, right? So we moved in 2020 when the COVID pandemic was taking off in the United States. Animals are interesting. 10 years ago, when my family moved up to Pennsylvania, Maggie adjusted reasonably well. She wasn't super clingy. She wasn't super upset. I recall her settling in very, very quickly. However, this time, Maggie started acting a little weird. She yipped if we shut the door to keep her in the apartment, and both Isaac and I were outside. She wanted to be right where I was at all time, or right where Isaac was at all time, which usually means under his wheelchair when I'm not home. So needless to say, we couldn't leave her at home. And I know many people will say, you just gotta let her cry like you would a baby. I'm sorry, but that's not an option. <laughs> I could not just leave her at home because my neighbors have crazy sleep schedules like me. So they may be asleep in the early morning hours, or they may be asleep in the afternoon. And I really didn't want to disturb them. I'm the new person, so if something's gonna go wrong, you know, it's gonna be for me. So we would take her with us, and we'd roll down the windows, put a big bowl of water down in the car for her, and we had to move quickly, no longer than half an hour, because she would yip non-stop until we came back. We did this for the whole first year we lived in our new apartment. If this doesn't prove her anxious nature, I don't know what to say. My husband and I knew we would have to train her in the mid-afternoon when I knew we would not be gone super long and when our neighbors would either be getting up or would be in that transitioning stage to go to bed. That's not a very long span of time, by the way. We didn't really have time to train her before this story occurred. <laughs> I have fibromyalgia and was diagnosed with it in January of 2021. So I was still struggling to adjust to my body's needs at this time. But we were aware what we would need to do. We just were having to put it off. The day this happened, it was warm, but it had a nice breeze. I think it was early spring, maybe? I don't remember. I needed to take my husband to the thrift store for some clothing. Half bound a frugal train. 
just as we always did, we part and I went around to get my husband's wheelchair. After I yanked it out of the boot of the car and set it up for him, I went and checked on the dog. The windows were down and there was a bright green bowl that we had that was filled with water. Unfortunately, I'm one of those people who talk to their dog like it's a person. So I reassured Maggie we would not be gone long and double checked that she had what she needed. Then I locked the door and took my husband into the store. This was about 35 minutes we were in there. This day was so just like so many others that I didn't even think twice about having her stay in the car, but I should have. You see, I've fed Maggie several times before leaving, and it hasn't been a problem. Usually she doesn't want to go to the bathroom for a little while, and she's happy just to kind of laze around. But for some reason, this day was very different. For when we came back, I thought at first, all was well. My husband was getting into the car, and I went around to get her leech and walk her for a bit. We try to do this fairly regularly. She likes the different smells. She gets to go bathroom, and she feels very settled. Except, when I opened the car, I realized that she had pooped and rubbed it into the upholstery of the car. Every seam, nook, and cranny, the seat belt, it all have been coated with poo. Her feet were dirty, she was dirty, and I silently died in the Goodwill parking lot. <sighs> I cannot describe <laughs> the amount of exasperation. Unlike when you are a child, you cannot pretend that you didn't see it. You can't tell mom and hope she'll clean it up for you. Nope. You have to make a plan of attack and hope you make good decisions. Now, I want to be clear. I am not a car enthusiast of any sort. I believe you have a vehicle. It's there to drive you where you need to go. You need to take care of it. But I don't spoil or pamper, you know, my car for anything. My main concern was the fact that it was everywhere and it would not be sanitary. <laughs> because I am a dog parent, I carry lots of little plastic grocery bags. So the first thing I did was to usher the dog out of the car, put the leash on her, and get her settled outside the car. Now the problem with a parking lot is there are cars going everywhere, people going everywhere, and you really, really don't want your animal to decide what's that and go chasing after it. So I was having to put my weight onto the leash after I locked it to keep her in a short vicinity without her going places. And she's a dog. Dogs want to go explore everywhere. And obviously I was not gonna let her do it. So I then set a water bowl near her so that if she was thirsty she could drink because, like I said, it was a warm day and I was concerned. But I needed her to just behave so I could gather up all the dog poop I could. I'm not a particularly squeamish person, but I was sincerely grossed out just because of how far everything went. You know, it's one thing for your dog to maybe leave a turd or two in your car and you feel exasperated. But when they decide to kind of leave a mess, I don't know how to describe the exasperation. This was just the volume kind of just blew my mind. So after we got everything that I could out of the car, I had to go to Walmart to get supplies. And then we kind of barricaded her in the back of the car and drove home. At which point, I got out, got my husband in, and then I took the dog into the shower to make sure we got her clean so she could not track muck everywhere. If it had just been dirt or something, I might have been annoyed and been like, eh, well, the car needed to be cleaned anyway. But dirt don't hurt. Fequal matter will. 
And then I proceeded to spend the next two weeks, which is any day I have off or time I had off, and I began the process of scrubbing with a brush and soap. Not everything came off in the first round, so I had to do multiple rounds, and I had to let the car partially dry in between them. I still needed my vehicle to take me places, I still had obligations, and I couldn't just say, okay, quarantine the car. So I also had to purchase a wet dry vac, and I had to soak and scrub the seats again and anywhere else, and then use the wet dry vac to pull up the water and dry it again, and then I put in baking soda. I tell you about the expense and the intensive process I did to explain to people who think they want to have pets the amount of work and depth that you will need to put in should your pet do something. Maybe not necessarily quite this gross, but I tell this story to point out to others that when you get a pet, you have to be willing to spend what little money and time you have to not only buy food, but also to clean up after them. This process is not only inconvenient, but expensive. The animal is, most of the time, not doing it to be mean or vengeful. They are more like little toddlers who decide to scribble on the walls. Now, uh, I will add a small <laughs> asterisk on this and say, my father had a dog named Annie, and she was vengeful. And I do mean vengeful. And that was the most hyper-intelligent dog I have ever met, and I've never met another one like her. Most dogs, you can be annoyed with them, but you can't punish them as if it was your teenager who decided to steal the family car or something. In any event, if you're a squeamish person and that cute puppy is calling to you, just ask yourself, am I willing to clean up any mess? Am I willing to offset any expense? I'm not gonna lie. Little me would have been appalled. There is a lot of maintenance and care animals need. There is a lot of different personalities out there. And whatever they need is not always going to be the most convenient for you. So... If this story really grossed you out, maybe do what my little sister does, which is genius. Carry dog treats in your car and spoil other people's dogs. I want to thank a whole bunch of new subscribers who showed up due to my last video. As I said before, I'm not a uh, tea channel or the drama channel. I just felt like this was something really sad that happened to a person in the art community. The severity of the crimes that were alleged worried me. I wanted to try to offer something positive. And if it was helpful for you, then I'm very glad that I put the time and effort to make it. I also would like to let you know that I do have an Etsy. And in my Etsy right now, I have these two new stencils that I designed primarily for myself. Uh, one is a color wheel and the other is a what I'm calling a grid stencil but is essentially a color mixing stencil so that you can see what a group of colors can give you. They actually got noticed really fast on Etsy so if you're interested and would like one or both feel free to go there and pick one up and you'll see me in future videos having the same nice layout and I'm working on putting my Patreon together, so if you're interested in supporting me, feel free to join on there. And remember, you really don't have to buy anything. Even just liking and sharing this video, adding a comment, or telling me um, your fun stories too, all of that helps me out a whole bunch. Thank you guys so much for being here with me, and I'll see you later. Bye.